He's a doctor, he's a fighter, but most importantly, he's Panda! <laughs> Goheen, he runs the only medical clinic within the back alley market and honestly is probably one of the only people who could do it. His strength combined with his gray morality really makes him right for the job, because if you got someone like Yafia to be in charge of a clinic like that, oh god, that would not be good for the patients. And you want to know why? Well, I can't tell you because I gotta give you my spoiler warning. Spoilers for chapter 22 and on. But what I'm really going to be covering of in bulk in this video is just straight up spoilers for season 2 of Beastars and on. So seriously, you have been warned. So with that out of the way, Goheen, this is part one of my five-part series about, in my opinion, the best arc in Beastars, the murder solution arc. I'm going to be covering some of the major characters of the arc, such as Goheen, Tem, and Riz, and then I'm going to be covering how the arc is portrayed in the manga, and when season two finally wraps up, I'm going to talk about how the arc was handled in the anime as the final part in this video series. By the way, the video about the manga's betrayal of the arc may or may not also involve Arlong Park and York New City. But anyway, I really need VAs for Nami, Arlong, Belmare, Karapika, and Uvo. Join my Discord server for more info. Anyway, now that I've laid the groundwork for this miniseries, back to Goheen! If I'm going to describe Goheen in the most accurate way possible, I would say that his role is somewhat like a secondhand extension to Lugosi's character, who provides a different perspective to Lugosi's own thoughts. He's the one that usually inserts conflict into Lugosi's mental outlooks when the story calls for it, but it really doesn't feel blatant or very obvious that Peru has him there for that simple reason, only because he is overall a really interesting and fun character that even without Lugosi could stand on his own. He's usually there when the plot calls for Lugosi having to go through an internal arc, well, except later on. But his inclusion feels just as natural as all the other characters, because Peru didn't make him one note. And that's what I love about her writing style. She doesn't write one note characters, for the most part. Diving into that, what exactly makes Goheen so fun? Well, as I said at the beginning of the video, he runs a clinic in the back alley market where he captures meat-obsessed carnivores and tries to break their addictive habits. Sure, he's very forceful with how he starts his treatments, but the real <laughs> meat of his treatments are simply just talking to them. He may have a really hard exterior, but he really believes in the power of vocal connection. Well, I mean, he's still pretty violent, but like, yeah, I mean... I think I should start out with how him and Lugosi first met. It was during the Meteor Festival arc. This is where Lugosi was trying to come to terms with him almost succumbing to his instincts and trying to kill Haru but at the same time, also being in love with her. Now look, Goheen has seen a lot of shit in his day with the job that he's done. Hell, he even left his wife and kid in order to do this. So he feels that he has every symptom of one succumbing to their instincts down. Well, that's until he met Lugosi. You see, Lugosi and Goheen first met in the most awkward way possible. Lugosi passed out in the back alley market, and when he woke up, he was chained to a pole by his arms and neck, and on top of that, had a muzzle over his mouth. Yeah, look, when this scene first happened, I had no idea what the hell to make of this scene. I went into Beastars almost completely blind. When I first read the whole series, only two trailers for the anime were out, and that was all the prior knowledge of the series I had to that point. I saw Goheen in the trailer, and yeah, my guess was that he was the gym teacher at the school or something like that. <laughs> yeah, those are my expectations going in. So yeah, when he first appeared in the story and this was the scenario that he was in, I was pretty damn confused. <laughs> I had no idea what to expect of his character from there on out. Well, he unchains Lugosi and uh, is pretty violent with him, but then eventually just has a calm talk with him. Their first interaction foreshadows their relationship as a whole really well. Let's jump back to how I said that Goheen thinks that he has carnivores all figured out, but then Lugosi is that exception that trips him up. Goheen tries to lecture Lugosi about how his instincts are subconsciously dictating his desires, to which Lugosi's stubbornness kicks in, which triggers something harsh within Goheen. Shut up, you little shit! Quit acting like you know what's wrong with you when you're just barking like a goddamn chihuahua! Listen to the words of a pro! You listening, huh? What you've got inside of you are predatory instincts disguised as romantic feelings. It's the worst of them all. It's probably true that you want a good relationship with her, but that's just what your reason is telling you. It's camouflage for your urge to maul and maim her till she's food. You still have time! You have to sever your ties with her before it's too late!
Lugosi's stubbornness, although it's very apparent that Goheen is heavily annoyed by it, is also something that intrigues him. Goheen just gave this angry ass, horrifying ass speech about consequences akin to Luffy punching a celestial dragon, and Lugosi still doesn't fully give in and is like, I'm 17 and I've never felt sexual attraction up until now. That right there is that continued persistence on Lugosi's end that caused Goheen to do a double take on everything about Lugosi. In fact, uh, yeah, Goheen comes up with an entirely new treatment for him. It's a small animal porn mag. Use it to check yourself. What? Hey, I'm serious. This is really one of my medical treatments. Durham? Durham, I fucking swear. Don't say the goddamn line. I swear. So you watch- Goheen gives Lugosi bunny porn. You know, I got a comment on a community post where I mentioned that I was making this video, and they called him the porn doctor. <laughs> Which, honestly though, it's pretty fucking funny that he just has a stash of porn to give out to his patients. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> this is the first instance of Goheen instilling doubt into Lugosi's head. But you know what else this entire scene was? It was the start to Lugosi and Goheen's partnership. This really actually starts to kick up in the murder solution arc, but I really want to say that Goheen is the father that Lugosi never had. Every single interaction after this one is, well, I wouldn't say that they entirely get along, but they were no longer antagonizing each other. The fact that Goheen showed up at the Shishigumi's base and stormed it with Lugosi really showed that even he was starting to understand Lugosi a little bit more. I know he said that he's only here to protect his patient, but it's obvious that he actually does believe in Lugosi truly feeling love for Haru. After the Shishigumi stuff, we really don't see Goheen for a bit, but then that leads into the arc where Goheen truly shines as a character. The murder solution arc. This is honestly the bulk of where his actual character is anyway, because he takes a center focus throughout the entire arc. But before I get into that, now that I have established who Goheen is and how he relates to Lugosi as a character, I just want to cover more general facts about him before jumping into analyzing him within this arc. So even though his clinic is pretty shady, he actually has a degree from medical school. Because of that, he has knowledge about the habits and weak points of many different animals, and that comes in heavy use for both him and Lugosi. He uses that knowledge when capturing rogue carnivores, and it's extremely effective. His job is dangerous as hell, but he continues to constantly put his life on the line to do it. Why though? Well, I mentioned all the way at the beginning of this video about his gray morality, and I think now's a good time to cover it. The Beastars world... Uh, city? World? You know, because of that ending, I'm not quite sure if the entire Beastars world is just that one city or not. Anyway, that's something for another video. So the Beastars world is heavily dominated by herbivores. Herbivores who don't accept carnivores for every aspect that they have to them, especially not their bad traits. As we've seen, the justice system is very harsh towards carnivores, and they don't even give a second thought when it comes to the true reformation of them. Goheen realizes this, and so he wants to do something about it. That was someone who killed two ferrets while he was in a deranged state of mind. He did a great job recuperating. So, what was it you wanted to ask? Mm -hmm. uh, I knew it. I noticed that you've never reported any patients who've killed someone to the police. If that guy killed two ferrets, then he's a murderer. Isn't it kind of dangerous to let him go? Hmm. Legosi. I'm a bear. I don't want to play hero by demeaning other carnivores. It was pure coincidence that I was born a panda with no desire to eat meat. I don't think it's right that I have more opportunities than others just because of that fact. That's why I enforce my justice by confronting carnivores with my body. I don't regret leaving my wife and child five years ago. This job is too dangerous. I lost my right eye and most of my back hair. Uh, you've dropped a lot of bombshells just now. Sorry I never told you. The world isn't so simple that punishing criminals will make it a better place to live. This is my ego as a psychiatrist speaking, but any carnivore can change if they want to, and I want to be the one that helps them change. This scene is one of the major glimpses we get into Goheen's character and his motivations. He's very lucky that he was born without carnivorous instincts, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that he himself still isn't a carnivore. He's on the outside and the inside at the same time. While he's with herbivores and not having instincts and seeing what instincts could do to a carnivore, 
that doesn't change the fact that he's still one of them and so instead of looking just to punish he has a true respect for them in wanting them to reform that will truly make society a better place that's why goheen doesn't turn his patients into the authorities after he treats them because of that heavy sympathy he feels for the people of his own kind goheen believes that everyone deserves a chance to be forgiven and that's something i personally heavily admire about his character Goheen's philosophy is honestly such a refreshing perspective because it represents the power of simply reaching out and talking. Goheen, in himself, represents a positive hybrid philosophy. Yeah, I know, pandas aren't hybrids, but going off of that, he has the best of both worlds. Not wanting to eat people and having extreme strength, he makes sure that he'll never take advantage of the fact that he was just built different and that's why I personally really like him. <laughs> Another super selfless thing that he did was liberate all of the herbivores trapped in the livestock trafficking world in the back alley market. That was something that seriously needed to happen because Yafia does not allow cops to enter the back alley market and because of that, Goheen is pretty much the watchman of it and if he finds things to be getting too crazy, he does something about it. He does something about it. He does something about it. Uh... You know what, I'm just going to talk about his usage in the Revenge of the Love Failure arc later in the video. Let's talk about him in the Murder Solution arc now. Goheen's inclusion in it starts out with Lugosi getting beaten up by the killer and trying to seek someone to train him to be able to protect the herbivores from the killer. Lugosi's like, please help me beat the killer, I don't know what to do, I can't do it alone, I want to- SHUT UP! Anyway, Goheen thinks that Lugosi is being absolutely absurd and denies him instantly. But then Lugosi says something that went beyond Goheen's expectations, as he tends to do, which changed Goheen's mind on not wanting to train Lugosi. Lugosi said that he doesn't want to be a bystander any longer. A bystander. That's what Goheen felt he was growing up. Knowing that carnivores have the power to change their addiction, knowing that they have good in them, knowing that they aren't heartless monsters. When Goheen was young, he didn't have the power to make a change, so that's why he got a medical degree and built up his body. He didn't want to see meat-obsessed carnivores not get the help they needed. He didn't want to be a bystander any longer. He saw a very important part of himself within Lugosi, and that's why he decided, even with how annoyed he is by Lugosi's stubbornness, to take Lugosi under his wing and train him. This was one of my favorite aspects of the Murder Solution arc. This dynamic of Lugosi being a student by day and training for something huge at night. This aspect of the arc rubbed people the wrong way because it was a lot less slice of life and yeah, no, I get that, I seriously do. I just have a really personal bias towards this kind of plot because I went through something very similar to what Lugosi did during the Murder Solution arc. Well, besides the trying to find a murderer thing. <laughs> I'll get into that later in the video. So Goheen's training was very intense. It involved bringing Lugosi in on jobs where he had to capture meat-hungry carnivores. Lugosi went through a little arc of realization that his jaw strength was getting weaker. So yeah, Goheen, as part of his training of course, tried a little test with Lugosi. Lugosi, I have one question for you. How did you feel when you noticed that your jaw was weakening? Were you sad? Well, you might have been. And that would be just fine! Hmm? Oh, wait! Um... Ah! Uh, uh, hey! I'm not a feline. I'm not adapted to survive high falls. I know! You're a young canine. A carnivore who has suppressed his biting force. His strongest weapon. Who are you? Now, how are you going to fight him? Wait. Fuck. I don't have enough time to show this entire fight scene. The strength in his fangs has been shifted to his limbs. It was a command from God to a very unique boy. Lugosi is an exception. That is what makes his character shine because of how much it goes along with the theme of the series. I'm going to hold off on expanding on that more because I want to save that for a Lugosi series of videos. Like how I'm making a series for Murder Solution, I will eventually make a video series covering Lugosi. Anyway, what I mean here is that Lugosi's exceptions to everything is what still drives Goheen to work with him. On that note though, Lugosi changes a lot throughout Goheen's mentoring because of the fact that Goheen, in retaliation to dealing with Lugosi's stubbornness, calls that out a lot, and really puts that into question with Lugosi if his ideals are really all that high and mighty. I mean, even though Lugosi does get confused and try stuff that Goheen suggests, Lugosi still stays true to his own morals. These scenes are pretty entertaining though, and that's why I want to get into Goheen's personality. He's fucking great. <laughs> He's a tough guy, but he's super damn smart, but he also hates just sitting there and taking people's shit. While it is a fun little quirk of his, 
What I love about it is that it ties back to his motivation of not wanting to be a bystander. He's very blunt too, and it's used in both serious and comedic instances. His bluntness is a bit different from someone like, uh, let's say Durham. He is always comedic, so when he's blunt, it hits a bit harder because it's such a contrast from his normal goofy self. Goheen is usually very serious, so the contrast effect happens with him too. Whenever he's blunt with someone, he puts it in the damn funniest way possible. <laughs> One of my favorite lines in the entire series is, I never thought you would start a creepy ass ceremony in my clinic. There's something about how that was worded that just makes me laugh my ass off. <laughs> Goheen, while he has a very serious and tough side, he can be very gentle and soft too. Yes, Trollstain, I made sure to mention his side story with I, don't worry. But I don't want to fully get into it though because I feel like I could actually make a whole nother video about this side story because there's just so much to unpack with it. I'll give a brief analysis of it here though anyway because it shows an example of two things. The first thing is Goheen being able to stand on his own as a character without Legosi and doing it really well. And the second is a direct result that Goheen's ability to reach out has on other people. Ai is a Tibetan fox who ate a rabbit and slowly went insane from it. If she had been thrown in jail, she would have never recovered from this insane sanity and probably would be stuck like that for the rest of her life with jail only worsening it. Goheen saved her and gave her her reasoning back. From that though, she decided to turn herself in regardless. But the gift that Goheen gave her made her herself come to the decision of how she wanted to continue her life. Even if it was turning herself in, she had the ability to feel emotions such as empathy and guilt. She was able to become a person again. That's what Goheen truly strives for, bringing out the real people within carnivores and giving them them the treatment that they need in order to continue being real people. I never realized just how great of a person Goheen was until I reread all the chapters that he was in for this video. Honestly, he might have just been elevated into my top five. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Look, Perry, you write such great characters. It's really hard to choose. So anyway, before I get on with the last section of this video, I have this section reserved for my buddy Adderman. He is a $50 patron of mine, and so as I promise, he gets a cameo in this video. Ah, oh, going that hunk of a panda man. I can talk about him for hours. But I should keep this brief. Gohin is one of my personal favorite characters in all of Beastars next to Gosha and Ibuki. I feel like he was a good mentor character to Legosi in the beginning and how the two of them just mesh well with each other, like jam on toast. Also, I love he's one of those mentor characters that at first don't want to be in their position as a teacher to the main protagonist, but slowly over time he starts warming up to his pupil. Although I do wish that we saw more from him in the latter half of the story, I'd love to see how he'd react to seeing Legoshi grow over time and react to Yafia making Legoshi doing something so dangerous that not even he would allow him to do. I can't complain though, he did fulfill his role as the main mentor, and the protagonist always needs to move on from their master. But damn, is he hot like hell. He deserves his title as Panda Daddy. So now I want to discuss Goheen and Legosi's relationship at the end of the murder solution arc. Even though Legosi kept denying all of Goheen's smacks of reality to the face, there was one thing that Legosi picked up from Goheen, albeit it was a philosophy that was very Legosiified. <laughs> well, it's good that you're making this simple. Well, what would be simpler is if you turned him into the police. <laughs> so really what you're doing is pretty stupid. <laughs> uh, I'm just borrowing your model code. That's all. I tried to eat a herbivore myself. I'd prefer to confront him personally, rather than have him punished by the law. But I'm not sure if our fight's going to be meaningful in any way. It's not like it's going to change me. Or even society, for that matter. Quit thinking like that! Fights are good because they're simple. If you don't like someone, you beat him up. It's not a bad mindset for a 17-year-old boy. Now then, what shall I teach you? Starting tonight? I'm gonna be extra harsh on you. Goheen son kind of reminds me of Grandpa. I'll do my best. The reason why Legosi having a duel with Riz was so damn important is because, like Goheen, Legosi is a carnivore and can relate to Riz. He feels like the law won't give Riz a fair punishment, and this is a matter that should be taken into his own hands. Legosi's character is at its peak in Murder Solution because of how well Peru translated Goheen's morals onto Legosi and still having Legosi retain a sense of self by interpreting it in his own way. 
God, when I finally make that Legosi video, I have so much to say. But yeah, going off of the topic of the relationship between Goheen and Legosi, I now want to say why I relate to it so much. Back during the second semester of my junior year of high school, I had a goal. It was a goal that I heavily needed to train towards, but it was something I was willing to do. I wanted to be a beach lifeguard, and the beach I wanted to work at had very intense physical specifications to be hired and involved a lot of training. It was a great coincidence that the gym I happened to train at was the same gym that the head of the lifeguards at that beach also belonged to. I'm not going to disclose who he is or anything like that, so let's just call him Kevin. Three or four times a week, I would meet up with Kevin at the gym right after school ended, and we would get straight to training for this job. Kevin's personality actually reminds me <laughs> a lot of Goheen's. He was really tough, but also really relatable. I learned a lot of things from him, physical skills and even some moral stuff. I really looked up to him a lot as a mentor. Now for how this story ends. I began to train a lot, like a lot, a lot, like seven times a week level of a lot. I overdid it. And just like Legosi, I ended up with a permanent scar that constantly will remind me that I decided to pursue this. Do I regret pursuing it? Hell no. A lot of unforeseen circumstances happened unrelated to the permanent scar thing. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to do the job. It really hurt. Especially because I turned down a lot of other huge offers in order to pursue this job. But in the end, I know, school always does come first and I really had to make that a priority. So even though things didn't turn out as expected, very similar to how things didn't turn out to how Legosi expected after his duel with Riz, I'm still happy with where I ended up now. In fact, a couple days after I learned that I couldn't pursue this job anymore because of school, I uploaded my first video, and look where that got me now. So even though things did not turn out as expected, I still really appreciate the time I spent training under Kevin. I know I'm getting all overly sappy about this, <laughs> but seriously, when I first read this arc, this was something that really reminded me of that time of my life, and that's why I really relate to this arc so deeply. Deeply enough to make a five-part series about it. Now to wrap up, let's talk about Goheen after the murder solution arc. Wait, why is the screen dark? Wait, is there seriously nothing? Huh? Okay, so there's two scenes, one where he sees how much Legosi has grown and also saved the same since his duel with Riz, and also one where he patched up Dolph's neck off screen. But wait, is that seriously it? Oh boy, rant time. So it's commonly accepted that the end of Beastars was hella rushed, and I feel like one of the characters who got the most fucked by that is Goheen. What did he do during the Revenge of the Love Failure arc? Fixed up Dolph's neck. That's it. That's literally it. Goheen is the guardian of the back alley market. Why the hell wasn't he there for the final battle? He would have been there to calm the fighting down and help stand up to Melon for how riled up he's making the back alley market. What about his ending? Oh god, I really don't like it. I really hated the plot point of how the back alley market was torn down and having Goheen work at a hospital in the main city now completely ruins his business and his character goal in the first place. His whole deal was seeing meet obsessed carnivores for the potential that they had to still recover and treating them in his own way. A way that was better and actually reforming, unlike the prison system of the main city. This implies that no matter what, he's going to have to turn all the carnivores in now because the city's hospital staff is probably breathing down his neck at this point, which also will heavily put a limit on his treatment of simply just talking to the carnivores. Ah! Sorry, sorry, I don't want to leave this video off on a negative note. While his usage in the series really wasn't good in the later half of it, let's still appreciate how great he was in the first half. Goheen was blessed, and he didn't want to take that for granted, and so he used his powers for good. Goheen was able to see through both perspectives, and that's why he wanted to treat carnivores with respect and save them. Goheen overall is just a really amazing guy. That concludes part 1 of 5 of the Murder Solution series. Happy Thanksgiving, and I will see you in a couple days with part two of this series in the form of the Tem video. I just want to say thank you so much to Conrad and Blythe for voicing in this video, and Joseph for helping me co-direct the video. We had a lot of fun recording, and you should go check them all out. Speaking of which, Blythe. I said I was going to do it, and you can't stop me. <laughs> Blythe is one of the most talented actors I have ever met in my life, and he deserves to have his voice heard. Go check out his website, his Twitter, his Twitch, etc. He's a professional voice actor, and I would love to see him excel even further in the business. So seriously, you guys should check him out and show him some support. He's really amazing. Anyway, to finish off, join my Discord server and follow my Twitter. Here is the list of my patrons. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. As for what's next, I have a podcast episode coming out on Saturday where we read lines while eating hot sauce. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And then on Sunday, I have a video on Tem coming out. A lot to look forward to. And then next month, I have a big video coming out called What Makes an Arc Great. It will be part three of the Murder Solution series on my channel. And hey, 
I'm gonna need voice actors for it, so yeah, join in my Discord for more info. Also, Beast Complex the movie is slated to come out January 19th, 2021. Anyway, I'll see you guys at the next episode of the podcast and the 10 video.